Let's go to Caitlin Collins. She's over there near the synagogue where the president is with the first lady right now laying stones on some of the memorials. Yeah, well, if you can see the president and the first lady just exited the entrance of the synagogue where they were lighting a candle with a rabbi inside. They couldn't go all the way into the synagogue because it is still an active crime scene. We've seen the FBI going in and out all day. And now there they are right there. They are standing next to these stars. There are these white stars out here, Wolf, each bearing one of the names of the 11 victims that were shot here on Saturday. And you can see there are flowers, balloons, signs that we've seen from people coming to pay their respects throughout the day, tearful members of this community. And now the president and the first lady are here laying these stones as is custom, paying their respects. And then we are told, Wolf, by the White House, they're going to lay white roses next to these stars as well. This is the first stop the president has made since he got down here in Pittsburgh. It was unclear all day what exactly his schedule was going to be, besides the fact that he said he did want to meet with first responders. And now he is here meeting, laying these stones, paying their respects. Wolf, one thing I do want to note, we saw these protesters here earlier today uh, in the community protesting the president's visit. And from where we are right outside the synagogue, we can actually hear them from down the street. We can't see them, but we started to hear them as soon as the president, the first lady, Ivanka Trump and Jared Kushner went inside with one of the rabbis to light that candle about 10 minutes ago. And now that they're out here paying their respects, speaking with this rabbi, um, it's quiet, Wolf. We can't exactly hear what they are saying. But you can see the president there reaching forward, placing a stone on these stars of the victims that were shot here on Saturday. And it is a Jewish tradition to lay stones. Uh, usually on the tombstones uh, of those who have just been buried and then go uh, every year and lay stones. Uh, once again, these stones are permanent. Uh, flowers are important and they're very nice, but they don't last all that long. A stone lasts for a long time. It's a long-standing Jewish tradition uh, going back centuries, uh, and that's why they're doing this. And the president is clearly, Caitlin, being walked through a lot of these Jewish traditions by his daughter and son-in-law, both of whom are Jewish, Jared Kushner, uh, an Orthodox Jew. That's right. And they were actually the ones who told the president on Saturday after the first reports of this had happened had come out. Uh, they were the ones who encouraged the president to come and make a visit to Pittsburgh, to come and show the community. And also, Wolf, you'll see standing next to Ivanka Trump there is the Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin. That is not someone we knew was coming, but he is here on this trip. Also traveling is the Israeli ambassador Ron Derman and Jason Greenblatt, several other members of the administration um, who are Jewish also coming with the president. Now, Wolf, of course, you can't ignore the backdrop here. This comes as some members of this community did not feel it was appropriate for the president to come and pay his respects at this time. One of the loudest voices of that and the staunchest uh, voices that we have heard over the last few days was the mayor of Pittsburgh, who said he didn't believe it was appropriate for the president. And Wolf, we heard that echoed from a few people who were filtering through the street today, coming to pay their respects. Sometimes members of this community tearful and sometimes even family members of those whose lives were lost on Saturday. So that is one thing that is a backdrop you just can't ignore, that there were some people who did not want President Trump to come at this time. Now, Wolf, we know inside the White House, they thought this was the most appropriate time for the president to come. He insisted on coming and paying his respects, something he said, from Saturday when the reports of this shooting first happened uh, and something he's following through on here. Now, of course, the backdrop of that is later on in the week, the president has several campaign rallies scheduled and the White House aides didn't feel it would be appropriate for him to come here, a very uh, period of grieving and mourning, and then later go on to one of those politically charged rallies. That is why they wanted the president to come to Pittsburgh today to pay his respects. And, and you can see the president and the first lady, uh, they're going uh, 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 Star of David by Star of David in memory of the 11 who were killed. And you saw the rabbi, uh, Rabbi Jeffrey Myers there of uh, the uh, Tree of Life uh, Synagogue uh, escorting the president and the first lady as they pay their respects. They went inside briefly, uh, Caitlin. Uh, they, uh, a lot of this area is still a crime scene, so there's limited areas where they can go right now. But clearly the president and the, and the first lady we're anxious to pay so, their respects to the so, 11 wonderful people who were mass murdered on Saturday morning simply as they were praying in the synagogue. You're not live. Can you please duck? He doesn't have a camera on it.
All right, so that's, uh, that's where we stand right now. You can see uh, the uh, president uh, and the first lady, you see Jared Kushner uh, and uh, Ivanka Trump uh, as well, the president's son-in-law and daughter uh, who have accompanied the president, Steve Mnuchin, the treasury secretary, who's also Jewish, uh, joining the president and the first lady as they pay their respects to the 11 people who have been killed uh, in, in a brutal, brutal way. Uh, the city has been deeply, deeply torn uh, and in deep anguish as a result of this uh, horrific, horrific act, uh, the deadliest anti-Semitic attack in American history. 11, 11 people, mostly elderly, very elderly, one 97-year-old woman, simply they had gone to services, Shabbat services, early Saturday morning. They were praying. Uh, they had their prayer books. Uh, they were simply doing what Jews have done for thousands of years when all of a sudden a shooter comes in with an AR-15 uh, loaded with ammunition, three Glock pistols, and simply starts shooting and killing. Uh, six uh, others were injured, including four police officers, two of whom remain in hospital right now. There you see Jared Kushner. Uh, there you see uh, Ivanka Trump, Steve Mnuchin, the Treasury Secretary, the President, and the First Lady. And uh, I assume Rabbi Myers, who is the rabbi, the spiritual leader at the uh, Tree of Life Synagogue, is explaining a lot of the Jewish tradition, also probably telling the President and the First Lady something about these 11 wonderful people who were murdered. Caitlin, you're there for us. Uh, give us some more details on what else we can anticipate from the President and the First Lady. Well, Wolf, one thing that's been really striking about this visit is who isn't here. When the president landed in Air Force One, he wasn't greeted by several local officials as he typically is on a trip like this. And he didn't travel with any representatives from the state as he typically does when he visits Florida or any other state like this. Certainly any state um, that has gone through a tragedy. You can think of times when he's visited states when there's been hurricanes and whatnot. That is something that we didn't see there. And you can see the First Lady Melania Trump going getting back into the motorcade right now. The president still chatting with Ivanka Trump, Jared Kushner, the rabbi. But Wolf, none of the lo a lot of local and national officials declined to come visit with the president on this trip today. Uh, some of them said they had scheduling issues. Some said they had already come and paid their respects. But it was a glaringly obvious aspect of this trip that they did not travel with the president. Now that comes as there was criticism saying, you know, many in this community saying this was an ill-timed visit for the president to come here now. Now it does appear they are getting back in the motorcade. You can see Jared Kushner there, the president also making his way to the motorcade. And, and I, I think I can hear some protesters in the background over there. How far away are they, uh, Caitlin? You can hear the protesters. We can't see them, Wolf. They've got the street blocked off in every direction for about two blocks. That's what we saw earlier when they were preparing for the president's arrival. But you certainly can hear the protesters. That is really something that shows that this community that is grieving and mourning this loss, this loss of 11 lives, um, did not feel that it was appropriate for the president to come visit, something that the White House uh, disagreed with. They felt that this was the only appropriate time for them to come and visit as well. Now they're leaving, Wolf. The White House hasn't told us where they are going next, but we did hear President Trump say he wanted to go to a hospital and visit the first responders and some of the police officers. Wolf, we know there were several police officers who were, officers who were shot on Saturday, officers who came and responded to this call and entered into this building, even though there was still an active shooter inside. 